Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. <clears throat> so today's upload is going to be a episode about try explaining why this summer's weather pattern uh, could mean an interesting fall pattern or an interesting fall. And I want to kind of explain why this summer's weather pattern is rather unique and not that uh, not that common. Last time we had one similar pattern to this was quite a long time ago. And it's just something I would like to talk about. So before we get into this video, consider subscribing to this channel, consider liking this video. It really helps this channel grow, helps me attain more people, helps, helps my reach grow. So if you like what you're seeing here, uh, consider subscribing and liking the video. So I really do appreciate that from you. We're looking right now at surface air temperature composite anomaly from 1981 through the 2010 climatology. And this is this year's summer. <clears throat> and basically all uh, the, the recent most recent day I could have gone to was the 9th of August uh, 2019. You could see that from the 1st of June, which meteorologically that's when summer starts, not 21st of June. Uh, that's astronomically and this is a meteorological channel, so sorry about that. But you could see from the, all the way from 1st of June to the 9th of August, which was the couple days ago when I made this video, uh, when I uh, tried making... Uh, you know, I was making these graphs, and you can see that this is what the pattern pans out to. Notice anything alarming? Yeah, I don't either. Um, really nothing at all. I mean, it's pretty boring in terms of the anomalies for the summer. We had a pretty boring start to June. It was very cold, very chilly. And then, and then towards uh, July and now... The <clears throat> beginning of August, it got cool again, but the midsection of July was warm. Now it could get a little bit warmer, but notice how there's one blotch of cool anomaly over uh, over the Great Lakes. There's a little bit over here uh, by the Twin Lakes in in uh, southern Canada. A little bit by the northwest, nothing alarming. Uh, the, the east coast, a little bit warmer as well. And uh, and you can see parts of the southwest with Texas, New Mexico, Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona. A little bit of Arizona. So, uh, you know, I wanted to compare. I was hoping that there would be something more drastic, something more noticeable about this year's summer. But like I was, you know, my worst fear was that it's, uh, that this is basically, this is what it's going to look like. And unfortunately, this is how it you know, panned out to look like. And now it's really hard to compare this to other years because not many other years uh, were like this. I mean, some years uh, consisted of very, I mean, you can see I did through, through the same uh, time period, through the 1st of June through the 9th of August. And you could see uh, this was of 1993. This, uh, this one, I just screenshotted a random one. This isn't really, uh, you know, put it here by specific choice. You could see that there's a big anomaly over here across the west, but that's not really this year's summer. <clears throat> I did another one. This one was 1992, and you can see I did the two screenshots in a row. And again, uh, nothing sustain. I mean, nothing even close to what this year's summer is. I mean, this year's summer is just completely wiped of colors of any sort. It's just mostly white. And then some other summers were where it was very hot and it was three degrees and above, like the 2012. I mean, I did this for every single year, dating from 2019. <clears throat> so this year's summer all the way to 1981 and I just I did that so we could keep a constant uh, constant average uh, you know I didn't want to really go back too far from the 70s and 60s because I feel there could have been uh, it's just too far and the averages based on this have changed since then that's why it only went to 81 and by the time I did end up fighting uh, you know went all the way to 81 I only found six summers that were similar to this year's summer, and this is what they averaged out to. Notice how it's June through August, not June through August 9th. That's because I could not really figure out a way how to do it just through August 9th with a bunch of years combined. I know how to do it with one year, but I didn't really know how to do it with a couple of years. I'm sure there's a way. I, was, I just couldn't really, didn't have the time to figure it out really. And so that's like the only area that where there could be a error, margin of error. But... I mean, you can see it's still relatively very similar. <clears throat> the only place I want to emphasize that is kind of wrong is, uh, is this parts of the southwest. Here was warmer. Here it shows it's cooler. Um, here was a little bit of cool spot, and the northwest was warm, and the east coast was also warm. And it's it's basically, I mean, it's very similar. So the thing is, guys, <clears throat> this is really hard because with a such a, I mean, with such a mellow summers. Of all the, with such a mellow summer in terms of temperatures based on anomalies and averages, I mean, there was literally nothing that was 
of any sort noticeable. That's why if, you know, now I'm going to show you what these summers led to in the fall. What, you know, these mellow summers out of this time period led to. And, uh, and honestly, uh, it's not going to be probably too accurate, this video. This is probably going to be one of my videos I'm going to be most skeptical about whatever comes out of this. Because it's just... I mean, I'm telling you, there, it, because it's average, it could, you know, it could have been flipped around. It could have been really hot in June, and now, and then through August, it was really cool. Or it could have been like this year, very cold in June, and now really warm, possibly, towards the end of August. So, you know, when I did figure out uh, what the September of all these years were, you could see it was, uh, it was a little bit, um... I mean, you could see it was—it wasn't really drastic. I mean, they were pretty drastic anomalies, but again, it, whether this whether this will come true is we don't know. This is why I think it's really interesting right? because there's, it's a giant mystery. So you could see here's a cool spot of cooler air up to the north, Hudson Bay, James Bay, um, possibly unleashing at some portions of September. But it seems as if uh, the warmth from the west uh, penetrated down into the southeast and the south and maintained itself for a good portion of the country and then uh, only another anomaly right here in this in the south but will, whether this will happen or not for september i don't know this one is like that one the most one that i have the least confidence in i just want to kind of emphasize that let's move on to say uh, let's move on to say october this is october 2008 2014 2013 19 and you know the same ones that i showed and yeah out of uh, uh what, what is it 1981 through 2019 that is uh, that is uh that is 30 38 years i think 38 years uh i think that's right maybe 40 uh, no 38 years out of 38 years only uh, only f six actually came out to be uh, again only six came out to be like le looking like this year's summer which i just want to you know emphasize that that's not a lot and uh you can see october also uh, completely different from september uh, there's no pattern you know usually sometimes we'd be noticing that some chill across the east and maybe some warm across the west or you know maybe warm across the west unusual and you know uh, cold ac or w cold across the west and warm across the east or uh, vice versa and we'd see that also in october kind of you know at least a slight resemblance this thing how uh, you can see it's completely different uh, so i mean that you can see there's a little bit of warmth right here across new england um i mean the good chunk of the eastern part is above average but some you know alarming a warmth across the northeast and then we see a little bit cooler across the west so again we can't really make conclusions you may be wondering why why did i make the why did i choose to make this video if the anomalies are so dull well um i want to share everything that i find out with you with you guys that, that's the whole point of the channel i don't really want to fight anything from you guys and this is these are the things that i at the end make my forecast stuff of i mean obviously not the only things but i take this into account forecasts or anomalies and historical analogs like this and you could see that this one actually does not help me at all it kind of you know further makes me question you know whether it will be chilly or not whether it will be warm or not in, in a certain place so if we were to go now November, this is like the only one that's like, that's like fairly constant with my other forecast. So like I've called for and I still call for a pretty chilly November across much of the country this year. And this is not even based off of this. It was based off many others. So when I saw this, I'm like, finally something, finally something that I could, uh, you know, find that is, you know, that is actually resembling of my other predictions and this one you could see it shows cold across much of the eastern side of november i mean the eastern side of the country in november and you could see that the anomalies are actually pretty big uh in terms of you know being below average quite significantly they're almost negative one to negative two degrees in some locations <clears throat> notice how it spans all the way to the north and this could you know mean possibly some arctic blasts and i also do think that the west will be possibly a bit warmer Northwest, that's a bigger question. It may be or may not be warmer, but, you know, I'm just, you know, this is, like, the only one where it kind of showed a resemblance to my other forecast. <clears throat> but uh, if you want me to make a winter one about this, by the way, if you want me to say, show what the summer impacts are on winter, uh, just consider, <clears throat> consider saying that in the comments. And uh, if you're actually still watching this at this point, uh, say uh, summer pattern in the comments, and I'll know that you watched to this point.
So now I want to show you, I think I had, okay, now I thought I had one more, okay, yeah, I did have one more slide. And this is always what people want to know about the, you know, that, about the potential snowfall. And there, <clears throat> so I just looked at precipitation rate, you know, the moisture and the soil moisture and basically how much precip fell, whether it was below or above average. Again, <clears throat> like, this is not even resembling of, uh, the, you know, this is not even... Uh, resonating the the vibe of this forecast, but many other forecasts as <clears throat> as many other ones show that the precip is not constant. You could see, I mean, possibly drier to the north, drier southeast, wetter. I mean, it really depends on where one storm system sets up, jumps a bunch of rain, and there you go. You have above average conditions. And I want to emphasize that just because you see this across the north, you're going to be like, oh, cold November, but below average uh, precip across uh, the north, that doesn't add up to snow. Well, you know, it's below average. It doesn't mean nothing fell. And if it's cold, then most likely in November, there would, there would be some snow. So I mainly based the fact off, if it's going to be cold, <clears throat> There's a more chance for snow, especially in the winter, where you don't need a lot of precipitation for it to snow. So it doesn't matter if it's above or below average, and that's why I base, you know, my above average snowfall based on the cold to a certain extent, to a major certain extent. So uh, that that's basically. I don't think I have one more slide. Okay, I do. Uh, this one is just June through August showed the precip of the the summer, and and I tried seeing if this resembles any of what we had this summer, and really, it kind of. Not really doesn't. I mean, maybe to a some sort of extent, but uh, again, it's precip. Each summer is different in terms of precip. I mean, there's literally no patterns unless you'd look at smaller scale, like where more flash flooding occurred or where uh, some uh, where more thunderstorms lined up or where you know it was more active. But overall, in a precip and from such a wide variety of years, it's hard to tell. So thank you guys so much for watching. Consider liking the video. Consider subscribing to this channel. I'll catch you all guys in the next episode. See ya.